Wild Hearts is fantastic. I had long been waiting for a game in the genre that Monster Hunter essentially created to come along and take a more serious approach to its world. You will take on the role of a kimono hunter in the fantasy region of Azuma. Across various hunting fields, you will use the power of the Karakuri, a Green Lantern-style glove to create machinery out of thin air. This creation system invigorates the game with a sense of grand scale and utter absurdity that I loved. EA and Koei Tecmo have teamed up to bring us the no uwu allowed hunting game of my dreams. So let's get into it in the Xbox era review of Wild Hearts. The game starts with your character on a journey. You are a hunter of kimono, aka beasts, and you come across a vicious frost wolf that quickly kicks your teeth in. Saved by a mask-wearing, tail-having, mysterious figure, you'll be greeted with an incredibly deep character creator. It is a turf nightmare, as you can mix any face, body, hair type, and more with reckless abandon. I am terrible at creating characters, but I've seen incredible likenesses done by those more patient. You can change your character's appearance later in the game with an upgrade as well if you want to just really jump right into the action. Just know, I'm 30 hours in and I still haven't unlocked that. Once you're done tinkering with your looks, you'll find out that there's an item implanted in your heart that allows you to weave Celestial Thread. This thread powers the world of Azuma and its rampaging beasts. The game's plot centers heavily around this thread where it comes from, why the monsters are drawn to it, and how you can use it to protect the town of Minato. Minato is your hub world, and it is gorgeous. Full of character and characters, you'll spend a lot of time here in between hunts on the mainland. The area you'll be visiting most often is the Forge, where a basic armor system and massive weapon crafting tree await. While the game apes shamelessly from Monster Hunter at times, it always tries to put its own mark on things. The weapon upgrade path is dense with eight different weapon types available. Each of them plays very differently, and you can craft multiples as you please. This lets you focus on damage types that works best against certain monsters based on familiar elemental categories like fire and water. The same goes for your armor system as both require drops from slain monsters and can be mixed and matched to give you the best chance in combat. There is a lot of storytelling in this game, and unlike Monster Hunter, it feels adult. It never veers towards the goofy nature of that other series. The writing is solid with only rare attempts at humor. It never becomes a dull or sour affair though, and the world created here is a fantastical mix of Japanese history and even some American influence. Sadly, I only received the review code three days before the embargo, and despite putting over 30 hours in, I feel like I've just scratched the surface of this title in many ways. From what I've seen of the story, it stays intriguing, and that's more than I've ever gotten out of this genre before. The true mark of any good hunting game is the gameplay loop, and Wild Hearts has one of my favorites. It doesn't have the decades of fine-tuning that Monster Hunter does, but it's a ridiculously fun title. Each of the eight weapon types plays drastically differently, and I found myself favoring the Karakuri Sword and the Claw weapons mostly. X and Y are your main attack buttons, with the right trigger being a modifier of sorts depending on what you use. For the sword, right trigger can be different attacks depending on the combo, but with the claw weapon, it's pretty much always used for digging your claw into the monster. This starts up a crazy dance as you can dash and double or even triple jump your way around like a greased up method. If you prefer harder hitting weapons, there is a great sword to get your inner cloud strife on, or a massive hammer if you're part of Bonk Gang. Breath of the Wild style climbing is here as well. If you hold the right bumper and press A, you can jump and briefly hold onto and climb various environments or even the monsters themselves. It's a extremely light dragon's dogma at times. The biggest differentiator for Wild Hearts over other titles in the monster hunting genre is your Green Lantern Kurakiri Gauntlet. Using Celestial Thread, which is a constant pickup or drops from your hunting companion, Sukumo, more on them later, you can create objects out of thin air. 
Every few new monster types, the games will give you a pattern. Hold down the left bumper and use one of your four face buttons to put down a certain object type. X are crates you can climb and jump off of. B are springs that send you flying 15 feet in the air. A are gliders that you can pick up and take off 20 feet up into the air with. And Y are braziers that you can set your weapon aflame for extra damage. Certain combinations will create massive items. Like putting six crates down in a 3x3 pattern next to each other will create a massive barricade. Watching a 50 foot long boar slam its head into one and go flying up in the air while being knocked dizzy is a hilarious and incredible sight. Putting down three springboards in a vertical line creates a massive cartoon style hammer that slams down for huge damage. Hit a sugar glider based monster while it's on its perch and watch it tumble and open itself up for combo attacks. This system allows for the best counter to flying enemies that I've seen yet in a hunting game as you can create a firework bomb that goes up and blinds flying creatures. And few things in life are more satisfying than having a giant purple crow get stunned right as it was going in for the kill. The healing system is varied as well. Your main heal is a 3 second long animation tied to up on the d-pad that has you drinking healing water, which you can replenish in various ways around the environment. Your Sukumo is a hunting companion wooden robot that you'll meet early on. This little guy will throw crates at enemies, taunt them to keep damage off of you for a bit, and drop healing totems that shoot a green mist in the air. You can also craft one of these healing sprays yourself if you put three of the glider kuriki in a vertical line with the A button. Upgrading your companion is done by finding other companions out in the world and getting old cogs from them. You can take these cogs and use them at your campfire, which is part of another massive and incredible crafting system. The game's opening tutorial teaches you the basics of its open level crafting system. Each hunting area is its own biome, with various monster types, endemic life, and items to find depending on the game's chapter. Even after 30 hours, I'm only on chapter 2 and I don't really know how many there are yet, but the change to each area has mostly been a higher difficulty monsters are here now type thing. The zones are really well crafted, featuring tons of verticality and density, and you'll need a lot of objects found in the environment to upgrade your gear. To aid you in this, as well as hunting, are multiple items that you can craft at a whim. To do so, first you will have to find the various dragon pits dotted around the map. Each one has a series of upgrades to power it up, which allows you to place more items down in that area. Items you can place down vary from tents, which become fast travel and respawn spots, to campfires, which let you choose a new hunt target or level up your companion. Hunting towers will scout the area around them and locate any kimono nearby. One of my favorites are the lines that you can shoot out. Once placed down, you can aim these as high or as low as you'd like and then ride the zipline in either direction. Movement is key in the game and your dodge is extremely powerful. When timed right, it can negate damage from pretty much any attack, even ones that obviously hit and move your character. Most of these items can be upgraded in your main leveling tree. Every time you complete a quest or defeat a monster, you'll get currency. The number of items you can spend it on numbers in the hundreds and can be entirely new items to create, adding more health potions to your character, or upgrading already unlocked abilities. It is a truly massive system that looks like it will take perhaps hundreds of hours to fully unlock. The same goes for all the various weapon and armor types. The weapon tree is enormous and tied to story progression, much like a Monster Hunter title. The armor tree is more straightforward, but does have a hidden depth in its human and monster variants for certain items. You can choose to alter an item to its human or monster form once the original piece is made. Doing so will change its appearance and alter the stats and buffs it offers, but you will need new items to craft this alternate version. All of these different elements combine to make an incredibly satisfying gameplay loop. The combat can occasionally feel unfair, but once you learn the enemy's attack patterns, it does get a lot better in that area. Though I still found a few enemy variants to be cheap no matter what. Those darn lava back monkey attacks never stop when they are enraged. For a first effort though from a team famous for their very different feeling Dynasty Warrior series, this combat is stunningly good. Wild Hearts also offers up two different graphical options with a familiar sludgy looking and feeling 30 FPS mode and the far better feeling but fuzzier looking performance one. I would highly recommend turning off motion blur as soon as you can as well. The implementation here is far too heavy and it made the tutorial's snowstorm look like a weird thick rain on my screen. It was really hard to see through. I think the best part of Wild Hearts might be its sense of scale. 
the levels are really big and they have monsters to match. The texture work though is a bit hit or miss, as is the world geometry. You can move, jump, fly, and climb into places you probably were never meant to, and when you do, things look real bad. I also got stuck a few times as well, though a few minutes of desperate rolling and jumping did free me. Character models, especially their faces, are fantastic. The eyes in particular look far more lifelike than another recent title, Hogwarts Legacy. There are a lot of different clothing types for you and your fellow NPCs, and the art style is gorgeous. I did have some graphical issues with the physics of dresses and other items, and there is a lot of clipping and a few weird visual artifacts. My fire sword did not like my cold weather outfit, which was a shame as they were key to beating several bosses. Every time my sword went in front of my outfit, it left a smeary trail of fire effects in its wake. The world itself features stunning art design and some really ugly textures. The ground can look like a 360 era title often. In combat, it never really detracted from the experience for me, but it was impossible to not notice while exploring or during certain cutscenes. It's not a gorgeous game, technically, but it's good enough, and the art style carries it. I also played with an English dub, which is in general a no-no for a Monster Hunter title. Thankfully, both the writing and voice acting in Wild Hearts is excellent. Japanese characters are voiced by people with Japanese accents. The American-looking and sounding character with the incredible name of Suzerin had a matching accent as well. It's a far different from the typical everyone is American and over-the-top stylings of Monster Hunter's dub, and it's a huge improvement. The music keeps up with sweeping Studio Ghibli sounding tracks that match the setting and grandeur of the combat perfectly. I found myself running around in low level fights just so I could listen to the music a little longer before finishing off my target with a ridiculously stylish cutscene. Everything goes to black and white as you would do a unique to each weapon final attack and the beast utters its last agonized breath. Boy, that got a little macabre. Uh, and the fact that all the endemic life in the area will twitch until you finish them off after taking them out, and you have to hold the left trigger to stab them in the heart reminds me why I never wanted to work in the meatpacking industry. The game itself is stable as can be. I had zero issues or crashes. It also features up to three players in online co-op, and I did get a few online matchmaking sessions in, and everything ran well. Knowing modern gaming, though, I'd wager we see some major server issues once the game launches in full. Wrapping things up, Wild Hearts was pretty low on my expectation list for 2023. After spending over 30 hours with it, I'm stunned. It is an incredible first effort from the team at Omega Force. Mixing monster hunting with Green Lantern crafting is brilliant. I hope this series is around for a very long time, because this game is excellent.